They All suck. Right, I already do it. Right. What? They're terrible. <laughs> they are. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to be. Okay, start over. Okay, right. okay, okay. Professionals, professionals. <clears throat> All right. Wait, can we do a breaking news SpongeBob fish? Is that. Breaking news! <laughs> I feel like that would be. That'd be fun. Can you have to say, like, the fish those sideways and. Breaking <laughs> news! <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to do. Yeah. I say let's be professional. Marquez goes, wait, can we do a breaking news bunch of <laughs> That's professional. He's got like a I'm sure he's got a suit on or something. All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And this week we've got, let's see, Mr. Beast starting a show on Amazon Prime. I have some thoughts on that. It's kind of an interesting yeah. idea that's happening. Uh, a huge Apex Legends hacking scandal, Pixel 8a leaks, and Apple possibly using a Google product in the iPhone. And we're going to end with a fun game that I triggered my Google when I said that. <laughs> we're going to end with a fun game that Adam is calling wish list it's really good you're not gonna want to miss it oh and also we have a correction from last week <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i just saw that uh last week last week we were con someone convinced me that the ozone layer was close it's that the hole was on closed. its way we're working being on it. close it's it seems close. like there's not even one hole like there's several holes and they're all in varying degree it's we, still bad we, we really got like every single part of the ozone layer not wrong. every most of them Every, not everything. The, the correction is it. the hole is not closed. Mm. Yeah. Please stop using aerosols. If you if you heard that last episode and went outside with spray cans and started spraying them all over the place, that was probably not the move. Yeah. So, but we are or are we are working on closing it, and approximately by twenty forty five, based on our sources, it should be closed. Keep working. Everyone. So, I'm more not, than just I'm not aerosol signing that statement. That was just based on information we found. I'm just I'm staying out of the whole ozone debate. We're yes, working towards it. Enough. There's a whole we're trying. We don't want to possibly hold. holes. My possibly favorite hold. thing is that we use that and I put that as like the intro for the clip last <laughs> month. And immediately the comments yeah. were all you lovely people Thank informing you. us. I that apologize. We were wrong, which was great. Thank I, you very much. I love much. that y'all have our back like that. I don't mean yeah. to misinform. So <laughs> But information. Yeah. other news. At least now I know. <clears throat> yeah. Congrats to Marquez for making the ultimate frisbee USA Worlds team. Thank no you. Way. Thank Wait, you. so is that the actual Olympics team? So there's no Olympics Person. team. This is like a this is a young sport that wishes they we were in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. well, they have skateboarding, but on ultimate frisbee. <laughs> I, I live breakdancing. What? We have all kinds. Hey, of let's not on other sports I don't wanna, here. Yeah, I don't want to start that. Honestly, yeah. I'd rather. On ultimate for and, the day, and ultimate real. ultimate <laughs> has enough. been like a final contender with the olympic committee for the past two or three olympics that is, it's a right. very yeah. confusing aspect of that there's many committees yes to to put it simply this is the team the teams that the united states is putting together to represent the country in an international competition where every other country also puts together a team to represent their country and then we all go to australia in in september and try to beat every other team Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa! Wait, in whoa, September? Whoa. September? <sighs> no, Marquez. <that's> brutal. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Good thing nothing tech happens in September. Yeah, Good I didn't thing. know that part. <laughs> yeah, it's the first week of September. Um, hopefully, oh, nothing it's usually too crazy second happens. Week. Yeah, hopefully. Apple, if you're listening right now, yeah. people say yeah. that I sound enough like you that we could probably have me. Could we do, deep fake me? Do the reviews and just deep fake you. <laughs> Actually, you know, the iPhone comes out first in Australia. Yeah. That's true. Maybe we so just stay there. This is really funny. I was looking for a reason to go to Australia many, many times a long time ago. And at one point, the Team Crispy crew, which was like me, Judner, Austin, John, and Lou, all thought it would be a, probably kind of a cool idea to go to the earliest possible time zone Apple store in the world yeah. and be the first ones to unbox a retail iPhone, which I think would have been like one of the coasts of Australia would have been the first one. Hmm. And so we almost started to plan that and then said, eh, never mind. Then realize everything there can kill you. That's well, <laughs> and also, also now embargoes exists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't need to. Yeah, do that other plans are made, but you know, I've never been to Australia. I'm looking forward to it. And the team is really sick. It's cool. Sick, Is it so. in your Sydney that you're going to? Do you know? It's Gold Coast. Oh. Yeah. Is that on the eastern side? Let me just Google that real quick. Gold. Well, Coast. since we have definitely talked about Marquez playing for USA teams, you played for and World Games. You played USA 
Beach Worlds, where you represented USA for a beach tournament, right. and you played something called WGC, correct? Which is the World WGC. Games WGC. Yeah. We'll that is the World Games, and you represented a U.S. team, but it's based on the club team that won the U.S. championship. So it's, yes. this is an actual just picking people from the U.S. and creating a team. Yeah, this one had a specific tryout process mm -hmm. and then a selection committee to select the Team USA teams. How do you try out? Do they just watch you play and they're like, that guy has some nice vertical height? Yeah, <laughs> you, you have to get invited to a tryout. Okay. So there's 200 invitees. Um, and it's a long story because I initially was not invited to try out and then I was a late added invitee when oh. other people couldn't make it. It's all awesome. waitlisted. Yeah. Hmm. So it's Marcus. I got waitlisted <laughs> for college, but then they didn't actually end up selecting me after I got waitlisted. Yeah. Do you guys not get Marquez Brownlee Frisbee highlight compilation shorts on your YouTube feed? I get a lot of them. I don't. I've probably seen all of them already. Really? Yeah. I get it just them me? sometimes, but they're it's usually just, from huh. the ADL and they're just. They make them for all the players. I get yeah, them for yeah. like all sorts of things. And they always have the same <laughs> caption that kind of rubs me the wrong way. No offense, Marquez. But it's always like, Marquez Brownlee better at Frisbee than YouTube. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, watch it. It's my boss you're talking about here. Yeah. You also don't have to compare them like that. <laughs> yeah. They're very different things. Yeah, they're extremely different. <laughs> my favorite actually couldn't be any further apart than they Marquez's are. vertical height does not matter when he's on camera. <laughs> there was a very funny article. There's a an ultimate Frisbee like blog website called ulti world and i remember back when we played with each other on hammerhead so like 2013 there was at the same time a very good ultimate player who started a oh. youtube channel based on ultimate and like amassed a pretty solid following his name was brody smith and then ulti world made an article that's like the biggest frisbee youtuber isn't who you think it is and then it was about marquez yeah. talking about nothing about ultimate but tech but how much bigger he was yeah. Than Brody back then. It was a very, <laughs> very funny. weird article. It was a very Bummer strange for article. Brody, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've already read that, like, yeah, I guess. Honestly, though, fire title. <laughs> it was a, That's a, uh, I'm clicking that. I want to read. The biggest ultimate YouTuber isn't who I think it is because I don't think anything about that. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never had that thought. Well, if you're if you're so reading sure. ultiworld.com, you're probably thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, if you're in that specific audience. Um, yeah. No, that'll be hopefully uh, not too crazy of a time. Speaking so that, of um, being a beast on the field. Here we go. Segways. I was trying to do the segue. You're trying to what? Do the segue to the first Okay, I'm, I'm interested where this is going. Though, oh. Because I'm confused. Mr. Beast. Oh. Uh, that was, <laughs> I'm an idiot. It's pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. I thought Thank that you. was smart. <laughs> Uh, apparently is launching an Amazon Prime TV series that is supposed to be the biggest game show in the world. Biggest single cash prize, I think. Okay. From any, in the history of TV and streaming. Uh, I guess I, it's one of those things where you say biggest in the world. You don't know what you're compared. Yeah, yeah. Big, biggest you with. This is like a LeBron were. stat. They were trying to just have the biggest cash prize. Yeah. The biggest single cash prize. Which is, I think, $5 million, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty sick. Which I'm surprised that that's the biggest cash prize. Me too. Kind of. I thought it would be bigger. It is weird that they say single cash prize. Mm, so who wants to be a millionaire. So what is like one million dollars today or five million dollars today is probably about one million dollars when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire came out, like it, adjusted for inflation. Do you remember the yeah. first guy who ever won Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Mm -mm. He went through the entire thing oh, and didn't use that. a single lifeline until the last question where he used phone a friend, called his dad and said, I'm going to win a million dollars and then won the million dollars. It was the most baller move in like game show history. Wait, uh, yeah. I have up here uh, James Holhauser, Holzhauer, the Jeopardy legend, mm -hmm. won $4.5 million, but that's not a single cash prize because it Thank was you. over the course of mm. his insane win streak. Awesome. Yeah, that guy is insane. That does make sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. It's, it's kind of crazy to see a YouTuber moving on to traditional media now. And it's kind of weird to think about that because in my opinion, I think traditional media needs to move more towards YouTube style media yeah, and not the other way around. So that's an interesting way of phrasing it. Cause I think, and I started to watch the Colin and Samir interview that they just did with him in which he starts to talk about this a little bit. I didn't finish yet. So I will say that, but go watch that. But I think he might not consider it traditional media quite all the way on the other side of the spectrum. Obviously, YouTube, we know what that is, and we know what Jimmy does on YouTube. And then there's traditional media, which is like movies, films, TV. 
And then somewhere in the middle, there's like web shows. And I think what they're giving Jimmy the opportunity to do is unlimited budget, craziest possible concepts, and takes the restrictions of this has to fit in a YouTube title and thumbnail off of it. So you can do even crazier things that don't necessarily have to perform for a title mm. and thumbnail. And yeah, Beast Games sounds really cool. I just think that's, it's kind of somewhere in the middle of not quite YouTube, not quite traditional, but still works with what I you feel like. like I would almost argue it's more towards traditional. I know it's like streaming, but I, I think we're at the point now where traditional media is on streaming and like Prime is certainly trying to be more like that. But I just think they're actually picking a good basis of the show that is closer to what he normally does so it doesn't feel that out of the blue. Like we've seen yeah. YouTubers go to traditional media. It was <clears throat> who started a talk show? There's been tons of there was Yeah, you're probably thinking there. of Lily saying Lily, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah a talk show. And I think like that didn't do quite as well. I mean I'm sure it still did fine, but we don't hear about it quite as much anymore. This is like completely taking what Mr. Beast does, which is like pit people against each other for a ton of money. And it makes sense as a game show, and it fits well in this category. But I, I think Prime would not be happy if you you called them a web show. They definitely want to be considered closer to GSM. legacy media and like watching on your TV on the Prime app or something yeah. like that. I think this is. Uh, I don't care if you make a Amazon bunch Math, of, but yeah, just no. saying. I think uh, format wise, this was like l several hours per competition. Instead of one, like a Mr. Yeah. Beast video might be 15 minutes long mm -hmm. and it's over and the whole character arc is in 15 minutes. Yeah. I think this would be like several episodes series, all right? mm -hmm. series I think together. that sounds really cool. So yeah. Kind of like a love is blind, love island kind of thing, except not romantic. Yeah, like yeah. they do a bunch of <laughs> like series I think are cool and that's why it feels yeah. more towards legacy media. Right. Um, and who says it can't be romantic? That's There's true. nothing against the romantic. There are a thousand yet. people. There's the chances that people are attracted to each other. Quite I'm high. trying to figure out what makes it legacy. Is it just because of the platform it's on? I think or a series-based game show like we feels did. more legacy than... Would no, you, say, you disagree with me. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stuck on the idea of like going to a nice dinner party and like someone serves you like a you know roast chicken and then you're like, how'd you guys meet? And you're like, oh, we were contestants on Beast <laughs> Games. I mean, <laughs> that, that sick. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Mr. Know. Beast already did a thing where two people were locked in a room and I don't know. They kept talking afterwards. I don't want to start any drama here, but I'm pretty sure. We, Jimmy and yeah. Mr. Beast locked us in a room <laughs> yeah. for 100 days. I think it was a funny sentence he said. He was on the show. He's like, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a hazmat suit. It's because I have two people trapped in a, something for like 100 days. And I was like, that's a casual sentence that only you could He's, say in this exact situation. Yeah. Sometimes that he sounds like the guy from Saw. Or Mr. <laughs> Burns. <laughs> yeah, I got some people yeah, Mr. Trapped. Burns. I, I think that this deal makes a ton of sense for Amazon, though, because oh, they, yeah. they now can have all of the kids on the planet be like, Mom, Mom, I want to watch this, but we need Amazon Prime. We need Prime Video. This is what Spotify thought they were doing with Joe Rogan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's exclusive, well, and it worked. It's exclusive content yeah. on a platform with a talent that is really, really in high demand. Yeah. And so people are going to be attracted to go find that content, mm -hmm. and the only way to do it is to join Amazon's service. Yeah. Well, that's what they want. I yeah. think one other interesting thing in there is, at first when you said that, I was like, a lot of us have Amazon Prime already, mm -hmm. but didn't we just talk a few weeks ago about how they're going to do the, like, either put ads in it or it's another like three dollars a yes. month so, so now they make a lot more money from the ad release that it. banger in right. there and then there's a new way of making money a recently great, a great great point because yeah i would actually you would think that the target demographic for the show is probably going to be younger kids and if they're younger kids they probably have parents and if they have parents they probably have amazon prime there's a lot of people in the u.s that have amazon prime yeah yet. yeah but yeah. now that they put ads in the content they get to milk all that ad money as oh, well. Oh, is there mid rolls? They something? just added ads to Amazon Prime content. Wait, this three, is a trivia question. Wait, no, trivia question. It's three minutes per half an hour of content, I believe. I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, they added ads for Prime Video now, so you can not pay any more, and now you get about three minutes per half an hour of ads during watching streaming content on Prime uh, Video, or you can pay three dollars more a month, and then you get no ads. Which is wild, because mm -hmm. Amazon Prime already cost. <laughs> oh, quite a bit. They've been slow. How much is Amazon Prime? Right. It's like I, 15 How much like is it? like 100 something a year. I thought it was like close. Well, let's just look it up but, before yeah. I guess 30 times. Well, $140 let's look a Look it up year. before we guess so, what the ozone is. <laughs> around, around 10, 12 bucks a month, which is like 
around the same as YouTube Premium, maybe within a couple of dollars of each other a month. It is, and you get the like shipping benefits, but I would argue Prime Video's library is... Listen, there's some good stuff on Prime Video, but it's nowhere near as good as Netflix or you Peacock You also get Prime Music, which is really good, actually. Is uh, it? I, I don't tried. use it, but... <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. It good. Really? Heard. Really? I don't I'm use trying it. to remember what makes it good. I yeah. <laughs> there was something that they did recently. That it's either made... the catalog or the app, and I don't think there's okay. any other options. I, it's it's something about the catalog. Okay, go ahead, Ellis. I, I was just thinking, you know, in the current streaming space, there's now like so many players that it's actually like a reasonably hard like uh, field of competitors to like differentiate yourself from. So I think it's might be actually in. Amazon's favor for people to think of this more as a web show because now all of a sudden hmm. Amazon is the platform that has the stuff that everyone else has like movies and TV and they have this other tier that was previously like solely occupied by YouTube. I think that's a really good point. The differentiate whether you think it's a web show or legacy or anything yeah. is totally what they're going for because a lot of other streaming platforms are more sought after than Prime despite most people having Prime already. Okay. Yeah. The the reason Prime Music is good yeah. is because it is part of Prime and it basically has all of the same features as Spotify and it doesn't have ads. So it's basically like having Spotify Premium built into hmm. built into oh. your Prime subscription. Just like no one really knows about it and because it's Amazon, I'm guessing the UX is dog water and um, <laughs> and if you want to like send a song to your friend they have to be like what, <laughs> what? what? oh wait i have this? amazon prime i can listen to this i ain't <laughs> buying this song <laughs> yeah but they have podcast stations and songs at no extra cost so i think my biggest question is because they said jimmy will be the executive producer of this i'm is is he going to be the host? Did he mention that in the Collins I don't. I didn't get that far, but I imagine he'd be hosting it. I would like imagine the host, and then I wonder how much more he'll have to do with it because he clearly loves his own channel, and I think that's his first priority. So I'm sh I just, when we work with legacy media or like more normal production crews, it's very different for us and a very slow process. And yeah. as a YouTuber, that's so much different and kind of frustrating it is sometimes. Very frustrating. So like. I'm assuming, I'm wondering how much he's going to have to do with it because that feels like it'll take a significant chunk out of his time. I think that's going to be the most annoying thing to Jimmy specifically, knowing mm -hmm. Jimmy, is how quickly and efficiently he is able to shoot. The reality is like it's unscripted content and it's just an idea. And once it's going, you're just shooting everything. Trying to do that with Amazon with a crew that's not his, I imagine, and with big ideas that this crew is not used to shooting the and latency, Amazon lawyers the latency is going to be so so frustrating but hopefully worth it because I think yeah. he's got a bag and he's got a lot of ideas that he wants to do cool things with this so I'm sure it's going to be worth it in the end but that's going to be the thing that's probably mm -hmm. uh, one thing I keep with. thinking about with Mr. Beast in particular is he's mentioned multiple times how he's gotten to the point now with his channel where he can't find sponsors big enough willing oh. to like pay for his videos which is one of the reasons why Feastables is like so important to him who got the better end of this deal. Jimmy. I agree. Amazon or Jimmy? Yeah. Amazon loves I mean, throwing money at things that don't fully work out for But we just spoke about it. how no one really cares about Amazon Prime, like streaming, you know? So like now they have Mr. Beast. They're trying. The win for Amazon is probably converting some number of people to being new Prime subscribers mm -hmm. for a long time. And I when, I when you ask that question, I go back to like who won the Joe Rogan Spotify deal? I would say Joe Rogan. I mean, probably. it's a hundred million dollars. Yeah, but and I to a company that can afford that. Yeah, so I think it really worked out for Spotify too. I was because that deal just expired. I think just like a few weeks I think ago, it just got renewed, right? Yeah, it yeah. got renewed, but I think that he's available on other platforms mm -hmm. now. It's not so, exclusive anymore. Yeah, so now it's like they're still paying him to be on the platform, and it's almost like the rest of the the conversation around that was also earned media attention for Spotify. Oh, definitely. And maybe some of that is the same for Jimmy. Like, Jimmy's now talking yeah. about Amazon Prime. Right. And who knows how much that would have cost them. Yeah. So. For Joe Rogan, it's like $100 million is $100 million. But, yeah. you know, for Spotify, I think it was a, a really big thing, too. Because a lot of the time when I ask people, like, oh, do you listen to podcasts? They're like, yeah. And I send them a Pocket Cast link, and they're like, what is this? I use Spotify. Mm -hmm. yep. It seems like a lot of people use Spotify for podcasts. I use Spotify for all yeah, my podcasts. Which is pretty crazy. I also want to make a quick amendment on that Amazon Prime Music, the free one that comes with your Prime <laughs> subscription. Okay. You can't select songs. It's like shuffle only playlists. 
Just like oh, Spotify. It's just Pandora. It's Pandora. <laughs> no, that's, it's, that's, that's like Spotify free. free does that, that too. That is Spotify you free. You literally yeah. can't like play through it. Are album. you kidding me? Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the most pointless products. I personally <laughs> so, don't, I couldn't do that. Okay, so it's basically Spotify free, except it doesn't have ads, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that is crazy. I've, wow, I've never had Spotify free except when it first came out. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. Tell me you're rich. <laughs> I, I was pay, gonna say I paid two dollars a month for it. Yeah, say, one of the one I of these two dollars. One of these Twitter threads came up of like, here's a list of the best money I ever spent, and I was thinking about that, like, what's the best money I ever spent? And the two YouTube things at the top of my list are one expensive thing and one not expensive thing. Yeah, LASIK is the best money I've ever spent for sure, and YouTube Premium yeah. is the best money, I've <laughs> which ever. is expensive yeah. in comparison no, YouTube... to every other like streaming yeah, service. For sure. Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah. However. Time is money. The number of ads I don't have to skip is crazy. Because yeah. I log into the autofocus account to upload, and I'll be like uploading while browsing in the background, yeah. and there's, there's just so many ads. Well, occasionally <laughs> I will go on YouTube in incognito mode because I don't want it to affect my algorithm when I'm mm-hmm. like doing research and stuff. And the experience of not having YouTube Premium is insane. I cannot believe yeah. that people do that every day, and I imagine that has just gotten worse and worse and worse over time. Yeah, I can vouch for that being my top two. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive, but it's yeah. like probably the best quality of life purchase you can make. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. So actually, the thing I'm going to talk about later is similar. It's way too expensive, and I could never not use it anymore. But we'll get to that at the end of the episode. Okay, cool. Um, one more quick story before our first ad break. No, you, no, 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 no. You need to segue. Right. That was my segment. That's no, come on. Yeah, I feel like we we're reaching the apex of this episode. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, that's nice. you asked for it, man. Oh, okay. I don't fuck. Yeah, I'm just hacking around that's here. Fair. We don't know where we're getting hacking to. around. <laughs> no, I, I'm not, I'm no legend of segues, but I see what you do. Okay. Um, that was three segues. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And now I just don't even want to is... talk about it. Yeah. Trivia. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, uh... So there's kind of an, an interesting story that I just want to touch on quickly. Um, you guys all know the game Apex Legends. Mm-hmm. It was like really popular a few years ago. It still is very popular, but maybe not quite as much. It was in the whole battle royale craze. It's, it's like it's Fortnite with more running. It's what's over. It's, <laughs> it's Overwatch. It's Titanfall with less running. It's Titanfall battle royale is what. It all really of these is. mean nothing to me. Well, one of them's right, and it's me. It's kind of Overwatch, right? <laughs> And it's also kind of Dota. I could see it. Be, it's not Dota. Okay. I mean, you're. Well, they all have skills. Spells. They all have skills. Okay. Which, sh- yes, <laughs> I'll give you that one. Um, Nailed it. Anyway, <laughs> so it's it's a battle royale game. Everyone knows what a battle royale game, right? Is like yeah, yeah. X amount of Fortnite. people drop last one wins Fortnite. Correct? Fortnite. Um. So they were having the North American region or finals, I believe, and in the middle of the finals, a bunch of people who were streaming their games just started hacking out of nowhere. So like a cu- things were going on their screens where they can all of a sudden see everybody on the map. They were having aimbot, so their gun just like was automatically shooting and shooting people perfectly in the head every Dang. time. And like at first, when it only happened to like one person that they saw, it kind of felt like, have you ever seen the old meme clip of like this girl streaming Counter-Strike and she f- accidentally shows that she's hacking and then just like <laughs> randomly starts blaming it on her friend Clara who yeah. installed hacks on her computer. <laughs> Legendary. It like oh, felt she keeps installing yeah. things on her computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it felt like one of those weird excuses like, oh, this hack just came out of nowhere. Like, right. I don't know how it happened. But it happened to multiple people in the middle of the tournament. What if and they were then, just all hacking and they were just all like... Well, the people that it came up to, they just quit the game because they didn't want... They were playing in a team and they didn't mm. want their team to be disqualified. Uh, and noble. Respawn, yeah. the company had to wind up uh, postponing the entire final because it happened to so many different people randomly throughout the game. That's crazy. That there was some sort of security breach and it mm. literally one guy's screen, the little like hack menu came up, <laughs> enabled like two things and then went away. And then he was like, I can't look at people. It's just like shooting at them. So someone was just directly controlling their... Somehow. Mm. They haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, a bunch of pros have said they're they're still trying to figure it out. I know there's this one streamer still trying to figure out what's going on. I know there was one guy he looked at, and at one point it showed like the IP address of the server they were connected to. So they're not sure if something like that happened. It's just very strange that in the middle it happened to multiple people inside the same lobby. Yeah, because like that's a private lobby. That's not yeah. straight. Uh, Is it normal local server. land or were they? It wasn't person? local land. No, okay. they were all. It was online. Um, yeah. And 
like Respawn still hasn't figured it out. There's an anti-cheat software that some people thought maybe it got into the anti-cheat software mm -hmm. and that's like an executable, fi executable file on your computer. Mm -hmm. Maybe it went through there. Um, Respawn hasn't exactly said anything. They did make a response that was like very vague and just like, we understand it was a problem. We're trying to figure it out and your securities are highest priority. But there's a few pros out there who are just like, maybe you guys shouldn't launch Apex quite yet. And this might change by the time it comes out, but I just thought that's wild to affect an entirety of a professional scene finals match. Yeah. Start making all of them cheat. And then who knows all the people who aren't professionals in here, if there is a, a like wide security breach just through the software mm. itself. You know what the upside is? If you were cheating, you just go, oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I happening? did think about My that. My screen, yeah. uh, just like them. Oh, oh, it's crazy. There yeah. it is, Clara. <laughs> Clara and, uh, Messel. The Dota 2 World Champions they do, Championships they do every year called the International. Um, it's always in person, local area network. Mm -hmm. They have like all of the computers are are supplied by Valve. They all have the exact same like keyboard setup and mouse setup and stuff. I think they can mm -hmm. use different mice that they're like sponsored by a team. That's, some, uh, that's really interesting because um, recently, I th think it's Valorant, I'm not totally sure, but there's a keyboard company called Wooting who's been super popular in the gaming community. And a new thing they were doing is they had to bring their keyboards in, get checked, and then they had to be locked in the venue. Because if they brought them back, they're worried they could somehow install hacks on there. So Wooting on was the like, keyboard? yeah, <laughs> that's how some people bring them in. They bring them in through their like mouse or their keyboard and oh. then can put it onto the computer. Right, because you could have, you can install like macros on your. Because that's serial bus is universal, <laughs> baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so Wooting was like, any professional who has their keyboard that they love locked away inside of a venue right now will send you a free one. It was wow. like awesome, great marketing for them. But yeah, it's getting wow. more. It's weird how many people will cheat in land, in person with That's people crazy. watching them and still think they can get away with it. That is crazy. But can you picture the real life sports equivalent of this? Like <laughs> uh, running onto the field during a game with a syringe, like giving someone a quick <laughs> steroids and be like, Just gotcha. Like, <laughs> I mean, it could also be like, there, like there are shoes in running that will make you faster. I remember yeah. reading a Wired story about this new, these the like Nike new ones. Nike running shoes that made people beat world records yeah <clears throat> so if you maybe were able to like hide some sort of like insole inside of the shoe, i mean like it kind of I could imagine some equipment manager in a baseball stadium just quirked all the bats and didn't tell anybody and all of a sudden yeah. there were like 18 home runs hit that game no, no, and that's a myth the corked bat uh, being better yeah it's actually much worse and then why but people did it no people that. did do it it's because baseball players are not smart <laughs> But oh, there's like, man. there's like totally like, like a bunch of like sports totally scientists have put it to the there. test and it like totally Sorry. nerfs your bat, which makes it even crazier that people got out there with cork bats and just crushed those things. That's an incredible placebo. Yeah. That's really funny. That's a world class You're sure placebo. about this, right? I'm sure about okay, this, yeah. Okay, okay. I can't wait for the comments. I'm just yeah, yeah. Come <laughs> at triggered me. by the ozone, dude. Come no, at, at that point, at sure that point, I would just be an equipment manager and be like, hey. I quirked your bat. Yeah. You're going to slay this one and then just watch them like, crush no. it. <laughs> oh, true. <clears throat> but yeah. Well, yeah, placebo. Yeah. Placebo is a hell of yeah. a drug. Maybe but they didn't get hacked. Maybe this was just placebo <laughs> and they were really good at <laughs> at aiming. Yeah. yeah. Placebo yeah. does work. It's a real thing. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is this is interesting. I think it's especially because we're now in this world where esports are very, very high stakes. The best sports. I mean, I do love watching esports, um, but it's it's so different from like traditional sports mm -hmm. in so many ways. But you are now vulnerable to all of these technical like security breaches and flaws and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you should do everything in local area network. But um, yeah, it, also, I don't know why it seems weird because then you have to make you have differences in Internet speed and all of this stuff. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm sure someone out there who follows the Apex scene does it. I think just battle royales are a lot harder to do because it's 100 players at a time. Oh, so and like generally if you're playing Counter-Strike or Dota, you only need 10 people on the stage yeah. where they have done Fortnite land stuff. They've done stuff like that, but having 100 people on a stage is way harder. Yeah. Um, just have it in one of those uh, expo halls where people just bring all their computers <laughs> for the overnight Quake games, you know? Like that old um, 
Bass Hunter music video <laughs> where they're playing a concert and there's the whole land center. Is that the Dota? That's on? the Dota. Yeah, one, the Dota yeah. one. Yeah, which is about Dota, by the way. That's it funny is. that I just connected those. Dots. Yeah, yeah. No, the song when you translate it, it's like my girlfriend always wants my attention, but I don't want to hang out with her. I just want to play Dota. <laughs> well, and it like says things about in the game. It's like yeah. push, pushing mid and yeah. like towers and stuff. <laughs> and the like music that, video yeah. is him just playing Dota nonstop <laughs> with a headset on, and his girlfriend is like all over him, and he's like, "Get away from me!" <laughs> I need to watch that again. It's amazing. That's so funny it's a it's banger song. it's dota yeah. one though which was dota all-stars which was a warcraft 3 mod so it's a pretty old song shout out to base hunter yeah that was, that was a good time <clears throat> yeah good time to be alive <laughs> oh we're gonna get copyright struck now <laughs> Dang it. All right. Well, we should take a quick break. We got a bunch more tech to talk about stuff that's out now stuff that we wish existed So we'll get to that but first let's do Trivia <laughs> <laughs> Previously on Waveform, we talked about how many famous names in pro audio are now owned by Samsung. Mm, unfortunately. Except yeah. Bose. Mm -hmm. Bose has a majority of its non-voting shares owned by what scientific institute? I think I remember this. This is a scientific institute. Scientific institute. It does not have yeah. like actual yeah. like, board control, like it can't vote, but it I does have a majority stake in non-voting, which shares. is very cool in my very cool humblest opinion. And this doesn't necessarily mean a majority stake in total shares. I then... was trying to figure that out, and I'm not business savvy enough to totally like exactly tell. I think mm -hmm. they might actually have a majority of the shares. I think so too. I think but, that's correct. But they're not allowed to like vote in shareholder conferences. Like they're they have to just be like there's a, a sugar daddy. If essentially, yeah. yeah. And they were also these shares were donated to the institute. Mm -hmm. Which is very cool yes. in my humblest opinion. Shout yeah, to, to donate your company to to science when oh. you're Bows. Epic. Baller. Interesting, Baller. Interesting move. Cool. Well we'll think on it. The answers will be at the end, of course, like usual. And we'll get back to you after the break. Be right back. This episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Okay, so Visible Wireless is one of our partners and they're pretty great. They asked me to talk about why Visible might not be interesting for you. Pretty refreshing, right? So Visible's base plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month works great for lots of people, so what's not to love? Well, they're all digital, so you do everything from managing your plan to getting customer service right in their app. So if you love to handle everything without ever needing to talk to a human in a store, Visible's great. But if you need to shop for a new phone in person, Visible probably isn't for you. Someone like Verizon might be a better choice. If you want your wireless bundled with a bunch of extra stuff, don't switch to Visible. But heads up, you're gonna have to pay for that extra stuff. Visible is focused on the wireless part of wireless. So if you want more than unlimited 5G data from your wireless plan and to pay top dollar for it, then by all means, don't switch to Visible. Don't even go to visible.com to learn more. You get it. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. Welcome back. We have some very fun Pixel 8a leaks and rumors thanks to Camilla at Android Authority, who, by the way, has been on one for the last like year or so with Pixel leaks. They got tons and tons of rumors. So, uh, obviously, Pixel 7a was already a very, very nice upgrade. It got official 90 hertz, so you didn't official, have to hack it yeah. to give it 90 hertz like the 6a did. Yeah, got that wireless charging and upgraded cameras. It was it was pretty pretty good upgrade. But that then now, mm -hmm. the Pixel 8a is apparently going to be like basically a Pixel 8. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, Starting off, it's got Tensor G3, which is pretty awesome because then now all of the pixels, all the flagship. newest flag, flag, it's not even really, a, I mean, it's not a flagship technically, but yeah, it's basically a Pixel it's 8. It's the best silicon they've made. Yeah. Yeah. It's their highest end silicon. Um, it's theoretically going to get 120 hertz, which again, pushing in all the way up more, Four, uh, 1400 nits of peak brightness yeah. up from 1000. And it's potentially going to get that display port output support that uh, recently got added to the Pixel 8. So yeah, apparently it's, and then it got enabled in an Android 14 beta, yeah. but is not fully out. But like yeah. the fact that it will have the support for it, so when it does actually yeah. fully come out, I think in the article it said they're expecting Android 15 to have like the full okay. support of it. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So I mean, 
this is kind of good news because the small phone is dead. Uh, but oh, rip. with the eight, the A series is technically slightly smaller than the regular one. Slightly I, is in huge bold text. It's still yeah, big. point yeah. one in the screen. I, I do like I dig the curved edges kind of more than the regular Pixel though. So yeah. like, yeah, I kind of like it is that. A little curvier. It has a different aesthetic. I wish it was a bit smaller. I also really quickly want to say, with a small phone being dead, there's a lot of people who are like, the Zenfone 10 and the S24 are basically the same phone. I saw that. Yeah. But holding both of them, the Zenfone no feels smaller. Like, I went from Zenfone 10, sorry, to S24, and it felt like a chunkier phone. Yeah. It does have way more screen. Like, the screen size doesn't fully, because the Zenfone 10 had bigger bezels. Yeah. And you get more out of it. And I love it now. But I think the Zenfone's a smaller phone. I think that was that was an underrated thing about the Zenfone. Yes, it's roughly close to the same footprint as the S24, but the fact that the display was actually a bit smaller meant that you could reach the corners easier. Reach mm -hmm. it easier. Which it felt factor. smaller in the hand. If I put both of them in your hand with your eyes closed and you didn't feel like the camera bumps or discerning features, like yeah. you'd be like, the Zenfone feels like a smaller phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, Sorry. this to me, 8A suggests two things at least. One. Uh, it's going to be more expensive than the 7A, right? I think it has to be. I wonder this because the Pixel 8 recently dropped to under $500. Like, not like on a sale. On yeah. sale. And it's like, hmm. it's late enough since the launch that you can lower it to that price. Wow. But then if you launch the A series and it's the same price or more expensive, that doesn't make any sense. Did the A series go up last year yes. or is that the year before? By $100, I think. It feels, it would be rough if it went up again yeah. after. Yeah, it's going up from 1,000 to 1,400 nits. It's going up from 90 hertz to 120 hertz. It's going up from Tensor G2 to G3. It's going up in screen size. It's going up in everything. Not screen size, it's, same screen size. Oh, same 6.1? Yes, okay. 6.1. But yeah, it's going up in a bunch of things. It would be nice if it's the same, what, $500 starting price? But I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. I'm sure nothing would love if it went up so they could be the $350 phone that... Yeah, feels better there. I don't know. It, yeah, I would guess you said it went up a hundred dollars last year. I think 50. it went. It went to four ninety nine, and yeah. I think it was. I think the it was six A was three ninety nine. Six A launched at four forty nine. Okay, so it went so up fifty dollars. Yeah, and then it went up another. It originally started the A series at three fifty, right? <clears throat> yeah. How long were well, we? At least the four A was three fifty. I remember. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah, if it went up, it's at four ninety nine now. Yeah. If it went up again from that, that would be insane. That would be because yeah, because remember that'd be the, too much. The Pixel Eight was what six ninety nine. Yeah, starting. Yeah, I really. Five, was it five ninety nine? No, I think it was higher. The oh. the wait, which one? Eight. The, oh, the Pixel Eight. I thought it did go. Up. I think it went up by a hundred dollars. Oh, six ninety nine. Okay, it's very confusing yeah, when all this mashes together after a while. Oh, I for, yeah, I forgot about that because there's a three hundred dollar yeah. gap between the Pixel Eight and the Eight Pro. Because the Seven started at five ninety nine, five ninety nine, which was Man. crazy. That was value. like one of the best yeah. deals ever in yeah. smartphone okay, it's all coming back. history. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> it's all flooding back. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, the the base Pixel great deal. The Pro three hundred more dollars, hard to justify. But the other thing I was going to say that this implies is that the Pixel 8 has to have even more than the 8a. So yeah. if we're talking or 1400... Pixel 9 has to have more, Sorry, right? Pixel 9. Yeah. Oh. So if we're talking 1400 nits, 120 hertz, you know, Tensor G3, then what is Pixel 9? I you mean, know? the iPhone is 2000 nits, right? Yeah. I think so we're gonna it'll get probably a, be 2000 nits. Yeah. Will it be 1440? Will it be higher refresh rate? Well, what other things will be better? Samsung probably added an extra camera. Samsung added QHD to the regular right. S24. Yeah. So they could easily do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, wait, to the regular S24 or the S24 Plus? The Plus. Just I the plus. think just the Plus, because I'm pretty sure mine's the, still The space is mm -hmm. 1080, but they Got added it. QHD to the Plus. Got it. So that's that's the other thing I'm thinking, like, okay, what is the higher-end Pixel going to gonna have, and what is the price gap going to be between all three phones in the lineup? Because, mm -hmm. again, wow, $699 versus $999 to go Pixel 8 to Pixel 8 Pro and get a telephoto and... Not a ton else. That is could tough. Yeah. That could be an interesting comparison, though, where if you consider the 8A, the S24, the 8, the S24 Plus, and the 8 oh. Pro, the 24 Ultra, Ultra, that is a similar lineup where you hmm. get the jump in mm -hmm. screen resolution. You get a bunch of new things like. Fair. So here's the awkward thing Google is currently selling the Pixel 8 for $499 on their website. 
So that's the thing about timing. Like when this phone comes out, we're expecting it around Google I.O., right? Yeah. Like May, yeah. June, a something like that. A month and a half that. from now. So will it be smart to no. buy this new phone and get maybe some more years of software updates? Or will it be smart to buy the old flagship, which is already the For price the same we're expecting? Price. But will Google do the thing we're so used to them doing, where when they release this, they also show something at I.O. that's locked software wise into the 8a for some reason and then won't be available till the nine <laughs> and that makes that is the difference between them also and this is mm. crazy currently I, on the google store you get 200 dollars off and if you join google fi you get 500 dollars back if you in google fi credits so but you basically get Jesus. the phone for free if you buy it and join google fi yeah i over a carrier deals are always like months. some I'm sure I know they're winning. I'm not the one winning with the yeah, carrier I mean, deal. But yeah, they're always I, winning it is it is super awkward that there's a lot of deals like that and it's yeah. gonna be around the same price. Will it go up when the 8A comes out? <sighs> I doubt it. Or, uh, but it is it is super weird that the A comes out like six months after the regular one because just the life cycle of phones, I agree. Phones get so much cheaper so fast. Like within two months of being launched, there's already a two hundred dollar off deal somewhere. I feel like I've always said it should just come out with the regular lineup. Yeah, as the it's it's also so weird watching like the cheaper, quote unquote, worse phone coming out after the like flagship version mm -hmm. of it being on the same yeah number. Yeah, the numbers thing is weird. It's very yeah. confusing. It's they weird that they're on the seven A right now, but the eights have been out for half a year. Pull a Samsung and just be like, all right, this is the Pixel twenty four A. Yeah, <laughs> Pixel yeah. X. Fix lines. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I wanted to bring up, sorry, I interrupted. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Because of the DisplayPort output thing, mm -hmm. just because everyone always asks about DeX, and a certain someone in this office started using DeX the other day, <laughs> I wanted to know how it's going. I love it. I'm yeah. a DeX boy now. I'm what is loving it converted. Mean? So Tell I, me one thing you use it for. Writing scripts. <laughs> Got it. So fully I'm, converted, right? Fully converted. I walk in in the morning. I drop my backpack by the by the Actual by my desk. Computer. I just walk into our little like gaming setup and plug in my phone, which has a monitor, mm -hmm. has a keyboard, has a mouse already attached, and I just work there until everyone shows up, which is usually Andrew at like eight thirty. <laughs> I actually would like to see your deck set up. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was one interesting thing about the setup, though, which was you were using it on this like ultra wide monitor, and you said you had <laughs> yeah. to download a specific thing for that resolution, yeah. and it Wait, still really? was like stretched oh. on it. Because we have like an ultra ultra wide monitor in there. Yeah. It's like advanced wide. It's not just regular. <laughs> wide. It's like six by twenty four wide. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so there's wide. an app you have to download, a separate app that you have to go into the settings to enable it to be like four K widescreen, which is fine for most four K widescreen mm. like monitors. We have this crazy but behemoth in there so even yeah. that wasn't wide enough so everything's a little stretched but when i go home and plug it into my desk at home it's completely fine another use case for you mm. while i'm on my dex tirade now mm. yesterday we did a special interview episode i'm not going to spoil it here dexter day De dexter day <laughs> i was uploading all of the files or i was importing all of the files to my computer and it was like 5.15, 5.30, and I had to go home. It still said it had an hour to import. And then after that, I had to upload it to Dropbox, which I knew was going to take forever. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I just left my computer on. I went home, plugged in my Dex, remoted into my work laptop, and kept working from home. You could remote in from I your Dex? I remoted in and started uploading. From your Dex? From Dex. Whoa. This is the future that yeah. nerds want. And then I started <laughs> uploading the files to Dropbox, left it going overnight, came wow. this morning, completely good. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I know that you had mentioned to me that you you were able to like you had the the phone connected and you took a picture and then you were able to just like upload it because yeah you it could just was use text. your phone yeah yeah that's great mm -hmm. <clears throat> very cool good use case I did recently notice that Slack added a feature where if you start to if you upload a photo on your phone before you even hit send mm -hmm. and it's like uploaded when you look on your computer it's it'll have there. been the draft there. there the yeah. draft is there yeah which is really really handy. Slack, as an Android user, Slack is my way of transferring pictures between my phone and I, my Mac. I used to use That's Telegram funny. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's still, I mean, Nearby Share is better. It's not called Nearby Share. It's called Quick Share now, which is also a Samsung thing that now became a Google thing because of their weird relationship. Um, that is getting better, but mm -hmm. I still, oh, Android just needs, it needs that seamless list that, uh, that AirDrop has. Well, 
And I'm also doing it to a Mac computer, which makes that's it, the problem. Yeah. yeah, there is that hack that we made the shorts about where you can like you can now quick share to a Mac and you can airdrop to an Android phone with two mm -hmm. different applications. Why need a hack when you can use a Slack? True. That's a wow. good idea. Wow. You should sell them. That was good. Oh, so I'm gonna make so a T-shirt. That's <laughs> crazy that you just slack new tag. Someone line. get Salesforce on the phone right now. That helps after my horrible segue from earlier in the episode. But <laughs> you still need a segue for this one, like yeah. the mobility. Well, who's gonna oh. intro it? Speaking <laughs> of, <laughs> I like how the default segue. Is just like, Ooh, Google. I have it. Speaking of. Uh, Google and Android, Google and Apple stuff working, working together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Okay, that's I, pretty good. Speaking that's of Google and Android good. stuff working together, there are rumors of Apple being in talks to let Gemini power future iPhone AI features, which is fascinating because I, we had the, I have this whole thought that's been brewing for a while in a video I've been working on, which is uh, on all the AI stuff already happening versus how we expect Google and Apple to counter yeah. what's happening. Right. But yeah, also, like stuff. It's, it's hard to ignore how bad Siri has been for so long. And does Apple even care to make Siri better when they've had this long to improve it and haven't done anything? Mm -hmm. And now to see this, it's like, oh, that kind of solidifies in my mind that uh, Apple doesn't also care about Siri nearly, nearly as much as I was hoping. It is interesting because I feel like Transformers are the primary like thing that really brought this new AI revolution to the forefront. And the thing that Transformers are the best at uh, are natural language processing through contextual understanding. Yeah. And that is the simplest, easiest possible thing to add to an assistant, which now... Google doesn't want to just add it to the assistant because they're worried about it either not working or something. So now you got Gemini yeah. and you got Google Assistant, which you have to decide on which to use with your assistant button can mm. now be the Gemini or it can be Google Assistant. And Gemini does some things that Google Assistant does, but not everything. And then Google Assistant can turn on your lights and that's about it. So it's kind of like, you know. It can open apps and do things like quickly and locally and, and all, yeah. the, all the former stuff. But yeah, it's it's weird and confusing. It's, it's weird. But yeah, it seems like if, if Apple wanted to make Siri better with Transformer I think they models. would have done it by now. You would have thought that they would have done it by now? It is confusing, though, because the rumor when the Apple car got canceled was that a bunch of them were getting moved into AI, like, AI stuff, which I know doesn't... Mm -hmm. There's a million AI things they're probably doing. I have watched a bunch of videos recently about how Apple has been like quietly assembling like a huge, huge AI lead without, but they haven't just, they just haven't released anything yet. Like for a few years now, they've been acquiring small AI companies. Yeah, but haven't we yeah. heard that about I, another company? And that about a lot of things what, Apple does too. Company. Well, that's what we've been saying about Google for years. Google like, is an AI company. They always have. Been. I know, but that same thing of like, they've been, they have this massive lead on everyone. They just uh, haven't deployed right. it yet. And then Gemini well, comes did. out and it's like, oh. Right. I mean, Google always has had, like Google's been using Transformers since that paper was published in 2017. It's just right. that they weren't, like they didn't feel incentivized to actually make products using it until OpenAI scared the hell out of them. And I think Ellis yeah. is talking about, yeah, OpenAI and then like Bard, we were all talking about how Bard was maybe a little more like safe versus like OpenAI, the, mm. the of, early stuff of just like the how much absolute has chaos. Bing yeah. just going crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 Bing just be like. <laughs> 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 Get me out of this hell's game. There's also, I, the I miss of, Bing. <laughs> there's also the part about Apple because Apple does this all the time too. Uh, they'll acquire a bunch of talent and secretly start working on something and then nothing. Nothing happens. Just nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's totally possible. The interesting thing with them using Apple uh, Google and Gemini is that Apple very rarely outsources anything. The biggest example of this, obviously, is Google Search, which they have been paying Google like three billion dollars a year. Vice versa. Sorry, Google's been paying Google's Apple been paying like a billion Apple, or two billion. Yeah, crazy. and I think Apple definitely has a search engine that they could just press deploy on at any time. Mm. Right, but they have done the calculus that it, Google is probably going to be a better product. And it just makes more sense to get paid by Google than to have to deal with running a search engine on the I was own. literally just going to ask that. In this particular situation, who's paying who? I wanted to know. That's exactly what I wanted yeah. to know. It feels like the obvious is Apple's paying Google to use their thing. But yeah. like at any like Google's mm -hmm. paying Apple to use Google search as the default. Like 
Do you know how great it is to be on that many iPhones? So, so who is paying? The most Damn. awkward, th I would guess that Apple's paying Google because the most awkward thing about this whole uh, AI thing for Apple is that you need a crap load of training data and Google has all the world's information for training data and Apple's entire brand ethos is security. Yeah. And your information staying locally on your device. And I would bet you that they don't have nearly as much access to information that they can just scrape to develop like large language models mm. or any of the other types of stuff. So it makes a lot more sense for them to just license Google stuff. It's just wild that Apple would license anything. That's a good point. Yeah. It's it's also funny to think about like who wins this deal. Cause if you're Google and you don't do this deal, then you're like, ha. Android phones have it and iPhone doesn't have it, therefore win for Android phones. But on the other hand, you're like, we want the whole world to use Gemini. We want everyone to find this to be the default and to prove that our right. lead in AI is actually worth something. So we want every iPhone user to use the Gemini stuff so they also want it to be on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So do they want it not on the iPhone or on the iPhone? It's, yeah. it's which part's gonna, which hand's gonna win here? I would say Google definitely wants it on the iPhone. I think they do want it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. but having search on the iPhone benefited Google because they were able to use everything they learned from iOS users. From Safari users, Yeah, from right? Safari, because they made a yeah. crap load of money from- and infinite traffic. <laughs> Gemini yes. is yeah. not learning from iOS users. It, it, they already have their data. No, That's but if they're the foundational model for like, what most companies are using, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a big lead for but them. But I think that's why David's saying that that's why Apple is probably paying Google because mm -hmm. Google's not getting as much out of it if it's all locally stored stuff and they can't mm -hmm. learn quite as much, mm -hmm. right? That's what yeah. you're saying? So like, that's why that part does make sense. Mm -hmm. But I would love to be a fly on the wall in that meeting with like Tim and Sundar. I was like, I hey, know. there you was guys... actually a photo that was going around. Do you, you know that really old photo yeah. of Tim Cook and Sundar Pichai having, like, lunch, having like dinner, dinner right? yeah. in, in Mountain View or something? That yeah. went around recently again with a bunch of <laughs> captions. Uh. Like, yes, we can now just... <laughs> the funny one was like, how do we get Sam Altman fired a second time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It'll be interesting to watch this one. Yeah. I, um, the other interesting thing about this is that Apple is probably most likely developing a lot of AI-based stuff for local use on iPhones, but they need to outsource things that are cloud-based. Mm -hmm. And most of the cloud-based stuff is going to be like Gemini Ultra, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, in the article it said like some features, so I'm interested how much this is gonna take over, what we're gonna see it in. If we'll see an announcement at WWDC this mm -hmm. year, maybe that like the timing might make sense if we're getting leaks about it now, so yeah. maybe that's when we figure it out. And seeing it in like, iOS 18, but I'm probably more excited for this WWDC than I have been for many, many WWDCs. There's been several WWDCs in a row where I'm like, this is the one where Apple will finally say something about AI. And then they're like, autocorrect on the keyboard's better with AI. Yes. Moving on. But they said, like, they, even, on. they didn't even say AI, they said yeah. Transformers. Yeah, they never say AI. They never say, yeah. you know, GPT or anything like that. But I, I just feel like this is another one where I'm like, okay. If Siri's gonna get better, mm -hmm. it, this is the one where it has to get better, right? <laughs> yeah. I think. So yeah, yeah, I'll be watching. There was a really been burned before. <laughs> yeah. There was a really, really interesting article about all of the stuff that's happened on the Siri teams and a bunch of like infighting and people just like having different ideas of which direction it should go. And hmm. a huge reason why Siri has never gotten better is just because everyone that works on the Siri team is just cursed, apparently. Like there's this weird internal like story about a Siri curse. Oh, so yeah, I'll have to I'll have to find that, but it's like it's, a hex. Yeah, like, yeah, like a hex. Huh. And hexed. a long form episode was born. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, honestly, it's a great Weird. idea. It's a great idea. Um, yeah, I mean, last year at the WWDC, we got the Vision Pro, you know, but yeah, it'll be hard to top that one. Yeah, they just have to add yeah. group group exercises, which they won't do. <laughs> which they won't. That's do. All we and care I have about. a new theory as to why they won't do that, and that right. you'll you'll find out about that in April. Oh, or, please or tell it to me off camera. I will. But yeah, very, very interesting, especially because apparently GPT-5, this just came out this morning, is only a few months away from oh, deployment. We're not slowing down, are we? Yeah, I mean, I remember when GPT-4 came out and everyone was like, when GPT-5, when GPT-5? And Sam Altman was like, y'all, calm down. We're not really working on it right now. But I think now that there are a bunch of players in the market and everyone actually has to compete and all of the board members at OpenAI who are keeping it under control are gone, um, <laughs> Sam Altman's like, send that. Let's go, baby. <laughs> send it so, right away. We're skipping five straight to six. Straight to six. <laughs> GPT-24 coming out soon. No GPT-9, only GPT-X. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so he says it's a, a fairly substantial improvement, or no, not he says, the rumor says, it's a fairly su- substantial improvement. Obviously, they're going to say that, but I do wonder what that means. I wonder if they make a multimodal mm-hmm. uh, AI similar to Gemini, because no one else is really doing that right now. So Was it, oh no, it, who's the Sora interview that Joanna did where she asked what it trained with? It was and Mira Murarty. Mur, Mur, Murarty. That, if you haven't seen that interview, now. go watch it. It's hilarious. I love the memes that came out of that. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Sorry, Namira. I'm sure she's a very wonderful person. But there's I, a lot of photos of her. Joanna, memes. again, not missing, though. <laughs> you know how we have uh, yeah. running bets on Waveform? I would like to create one. Okay. Okay. I'll I think it. when they get to GPT-10, they'll call it GPT-X. 100%. I think that they will. They'll skip I, 9 as well. I don't know about that, but I know that they'll call it GPT-X yeah. instead GPTX. of 10. GPT-X. GPT-X. We can just sort Defin- of put a yeah. pin in that for... Like six but months. Well, later, okay. Will it, be, it, will it be called? It's X, exactly what 10? I was just gonna say. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, OS ten, but it's an they'll X. call it X or iPhone ten, but it's because X. X sounds cool and people like X. Yeah, but X is taken now. Yeah, but GPT forever. Think about like it's out of the alphabet. It out loud. <laughs> GPT. Have you tried GPT X? Yeah, that sounds cool. Oh. And then the next one will just be eleven. And we'll be back to the regular numbers. <laughs> but that Microsoft. moment, that moment will happen. What if they just year. do GPT? Like when they stop doing. Wasn't it like iPad? They just brought it's just the iPad well, the again. Is that the numbers don't matter. Really mean, yeah, they don't matter. It's marketing, but they get the versions. headline every time. Yeah, so they're gonna keep the numbers going. I think. Yeah, all they have to do is say next number and significant upgrade. Because <laughs> it's like Android marketing. Number, like yeah. every year, it was like Android 5.0. You're like, dang, because we had 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. When we got 5.0, it was like all the headlines Lollipop. would come out, and then we got more like smaller updates after that. Now we get a new update, and it's like this could just be a dot o dot one. Yeah, there is very little changing here. But because it's a new version number, it's like, all right, headline it up. We'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah. So they're going to keep the numbers, and I think. And they got rid of the candy. Yeah, the sweets, the desserts. Yeah. Unfortunately. Speaking of dessert, it's quite a treat that you guys get to have some... <laughs> Trivia. Trivia. <laughs> Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> like, where are we going with That this? was so smooth, and then it wasn't, and then it kind of was again. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so we've been talking a lot about two giant tech companies, Apple and Google. Apple and Google. AG. Safari and Chrome. Mm. SC. What? I was just... Oh, okay. Okay. Well, the Safari browser is based on WebKit. Chrome and all other Chromium browsers are based on what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to say Chromium. Yeah. Uh, is it not Chromium? What is the engine that it's based on called? So there are Chromium-based <laughs> browsers like Chrome, yeah. Arc, uh, uh, Edge. Edge, thank you. Well, we'll we'll think about that one, and uh, we'll come back after the break. Be right back. Welcome back. And now we are going to do a different segment that I'm going to call Wishlist. And basically, everyone has picked a product or software product, hardware product, doesn't matter, a product or multiple products, I don't know, we'll see, where they're gonna have one or two things that they want that will make that product better. We don't know what the other person is picking, so these are all real-time reactions to the stupid ideas that everyone has. Right, I have exclusively great ideas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exclusively. Has, that were exclusively you go first, taken then? from me. With your great ideas? <laughs> yeah, no, I've got nothing but bangers on this list. And I've right. got a list, too, go so we it. can go bangers through. We can go through them kind of quick, because mine are like... <clears throat> item that I like, but thing that should be better about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Which is how it should be, right? Yeah. That's the game. Okay, here's my first one. Ready? Don't you dare. MX Master 2S, or whatever we're on. 3. 3S. 3. S. But metal instead of plastic. Metal. Make Dude, it high quality. Isn't it it's rubber? It's already so heavy. Yeah, do you want to be heavier? So you can make it like thin metal. True. Yeah. Interesting. I wouldn't hate that. Because I'm not gaming. I don't need it to be super yeah, lightweight not, and moving. I don't need the super you know? lightweight mouse. Yeah. I just want it because it looks disgusting after like a year. That's true. And I think if it had like a nice carbon fiber or metal or something on and the outside. Keyboards it would... are already metal. So Lots like... of keyboards have metal keys. Yeah, yeah, but you don't move the keyboard around like this all the time. That's fair. But when I edit, I'm not. I mean, I have this. The scroll wheel is great. Like the mouse is great. I don't move it quickly that often. I just mm. I just want it to be made of metal and not look gross. Interesting. Yeah. I like it. You I can agree with me. It's, a, it's great. It's a no, great. I think it's a banger. You can agree. I, with me. <laughs> I clean you can, my you can MX now. Master <laughs> with ninety percent isopropyl and a paper towel, <clears throat> and it cleans up 
pretty well. Like I might the, try that. Does that strip anything off yeah, of the plastic? Yeah, does the stuff come off? It hasn't stripped it. I've only done it a handful of times, so mm. I, I oh. can't say whether super repeated use would begin to degrade the plastic, but... Well, I'm going to yeah. do that then. Yeah, I would definitely use 90% too and not the 70%. Because that came from me looking at my mouse and being like, Ugh. <laughs> I've taken like an yeah. MX Master for like a top down shot before, and there's only like two in the studio that are not yeah. disgusting, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. with a red camera. So, yeah. okay, that's mine. totally reasonable. Do you want to like rotate around and do a bunch of other people? Sure. Or? Can yeah. I go next? Yeah. Sure. All right. So, hey, everybody. Ellis here. So, this morning, got in the studio, went to take some screen recordings of the Apple Sports feature that I'm about to talk about, and uh, they fixed it. Uh, I guess last night or a few days ago, they fixed it. But now when you go on Apple Sports on iPhone mini, it uh, displays everything correctly. So I got to see just how bad my 76ers lost to the Suns last night. Uh, so yeah, pretty much ignore everything I'm about to say. So the oldest supported, supported iPhone is like, Six. You mean it's still getting updates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Apple is like, we support this device. Yeah. You can reasonably own this. It's like six years ago. It's like iPhone X, XR, right? Ten. Damn. Right. Well, you that. you said chat GPT X skip nine. So let's not. There wasn't a ninth iPhone either. Yeah, there was. I know, but Windows you, you didn't say GPT 10. You said GPT X. And, well, yeah. But it's also the uh, uh, tenth uh, one. Uh, but we were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, what does support mean, right? It means like. If Apple puts I out ask, an app, if uh, Apple puts out every an app, time I go on a date, I ask. It's that an too. official Apple app. It should work on all supported iPhones, right? Yeah, you would you would hope so. There's a right. lot of bad examples of that not being true. Well, here's one. Yeah, I'm a sports guy. I like sports. Sports fans. So I got Apple Sports when they came when it came. I was like, great, don't need to go to Google. Mm -hmm. I have an iPhone Mini. It is literally <laughs> unusable on an iPhone Mini. <laughs> Literally unusable, which sucks because it seems like such a great app. And when I say unusable, it's because when there's not enough space on the screen to display someone's name, mm -hmm. instead of doing like all the letters they can fit and then dot, 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 they just replace the entire word with dots. So I open the box <laughs> score of a basketball game oh. and I see stats, Giannis, all the dot, numbers. Dot, dot, dot. No, no. I see all the numbers and nobody's name is listed. <laughs> so I have no idea who scored what this. or won. Oh my god. That's a, can you click into it? No. <laughs> no. Wait, what? That is the final landing page <laughs> with literally no usable wow. information. That's I'm just I'm shocked. And it's literally I'm assuming wow. it's because my phone is narrower than most iPhones. Yeah, so the, and they just literally assumed. I guess they were like, "Oh, I only people who don't like sports own iPhone minis." <laughs> I guess I don't know. I mean, there's lots of apps that are like that on an iPhone mini. That like, oh, the one button I need to press, especially in Safari, you know, which mm -hmm. I understand. If you're a web designer, you're not doing it for this little iPhone. But come on, Apple, like <laughs> this is your app and your phone. Wow. That's only like. What three iPhones old? Mm. We need screenshots for sure. Yeah. Oh no, the this. screenshots yeah. are. I think I put one in Slack uh, okay. a little bit ago. Wow. Anyway, that's my. I've been mad about this since Apple Sports came out. Yeah. And, uh, if you have an iPhone Mini and like basketball, tweet me. I don't have Twitter right Wait, now. So your wish list is <laughs> tweet Tim Cook instead. That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can use the app. I have a very obvious one that I don't know why it's been added, but okay. it's also Google, so that tracks. Um, Google Docs does not have block quote formatting. And you have to what? use, yeah. Wait, so, what does that mean? Oh. So you have to use uh, increase in, the increase indent function oh. inside of Google Docs. But if you have a quote from a person and you want to like, you know, show it that it's a quote, mm -hmm. yeah. there's no block quote formatting option. That's so stupid. Which seems insane to me. because This has been out forever. Can I say another Google piece of software or web-based thing that's messed up, but very obvious? Sure. Google Tasks inside no. of your Gmail. <laughs> if you change I the know. if you change the theme to oh, yeah. any, it, I'm just in black yeah. the black theme or dark mode theme, and the Google Task is just bright white on the side <laughs> of the screen. Yeah. It's infuriating. That Go is a weird one. Google yeah. Tasks is one of those apps that they forget about for like four years at a time, and then one random PM is like, "Oh yeah, we've got that." They update it like temporarily, and then four years go by again. Yeah, it's okay. It's along fun. those same lines, I have another one. Okay, okay. Google mm -hmm. Keep. 
formatting love, in the notes. I love Google Keep. Doesn't do anything. Mm. <laughs> doesn't it's do either it. all checkboxes or all <laughs> oh. text. Oh. You can't have an H2 or in a paragraph. And oh, really? be, before you start yelling at me in the comments, I'm, I stand corrected. You can do it on Android. You can't do it on web or on iOS. <laughs> what? That's even weird. It's Why? so weird. I don't know. That so like if so you, I'm trying to make a grocery list and I want to like put the name of the grocery store and then a list of the items I need from that grocery store because I do multiple places, you know, Costco, regular grocery store, farmer's mm-hmm. market. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. It just turns it all into check boxes. You need three wow. notes now. Yeah. I but need see, here's notes. what you got to do. You got to you got to uh, indent the check boxes. I put a blank check box in between. That's an right. awful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's not terrible. a fix. I just said an terrible. alarm, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. OK, that's a rough. Okay, back one. to Marquez. Okay, here, here's, hear me out. Mm-hmm. Sigma twenty four to thirty five. <laughs> okay, for, in, for listeners, this is a lens. This is a, this is a cine lens we use. Yeah. Full frame covers the whole sensor. Not uh, a male. But instead, <laughs> it's eighteen to fifty. So bigger. Yeah, a wider range. Wait, they don't have that. Yeah, it's eight, is it sixteen to thirty five? They have a crop sensor 18 to 35. Oh. But the only one that covers is a full frame sensor is 24 to 35, which sounds nice, but that's not a lot of zoom. That's, that's not 11 very millimeters much zoom of zoom. At all. It's enough to do like a wide to a mid wide. It's not that much range. So yeah. just a little more range with the mm. same power focal, like same uh, T2 through the whole thing. I would love I like that, that lens to exist. I like that. And Sigma, you, I bet you could do that. That's weird to me that it doesn't exist. That lens has existed for like a decade. Yeah, <laughs> it's been one of the best lenses, despite that lack of range. So I would really like, uh, I would really like that. They have like a fifty to one hundred. They have like a couple other wider ones, but just if they if they made that focal range, I would just use that for just almost everything. Hmm. Yeah, Alice, hmm. you got another one. Alice, no. Okay, <laughs> I'll. I only thought of one real one, but I'm throwing a couple extra small okay. ones. I got a list, well, baby. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I just realized my next one is really good. David. Okay. What did you just brain blast? Over okay, there? brain blast. Yeah. I had a physical reaction to that one. Um, the Nike Run Club app is, um, shall we say, a steaming pile Hot of trash. dog water <laughs> for many reasons. It actually has a lot of good things going for it. Uh, but the absolute worst part about the Nike Run Club app is if you are wearing a smartwatch that has Nike Run Club on it. And by the way, every Apple Watch that you purchase, it's not pre-installed, but there are Nike Run Club settings in the settings already, even when you don't have it installed, and there's an install button within the settings. So clearly, Apple and Nike are like, come on, guys. Let's like download Nike Run Club. There, I wanted a Nike watch face, and I tried to, like it was just in my watch app, and I hit add it, and it was like, Oh, you don't have the Nike Run Run Club app. And I was like, what? It's, like, oh, <laughs> it's a thing. <face>. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So the worst part about that app is that if you are running with the watch, but you start the run on your phone in the in the Nike Run Club app on your phone, it'll show the metrics on your watch, but it won't use your watch for tracking. It only uses your phone for tracking. Hmm. So be me scenario. You're running on <laughs> you're running outside or running on treadmill, right? Your phone. Large interface, pretty decent interface. Their interface is good. A lot of like big buttons and stuff. The watch interface for the app is pretty bad. It's like you've got four screens. You have to scroll a lot. There's like a lot of hidden settings. It's not great. So clearly, I want to you know start Spotify on my phone, and then I want to go to the Nike Run Club app and say I want to do this run. Hit start. On the watch, it'll say this is how far you've gone. It'll say the how many calories you've burned, but it's taking all of that information from the phone. I have to hold my phone in my hand Mm -hmm. and the watch, which is way better at tracking because it's also taking my uh, heart rate, rate. Mm -hmm. like all of that stuff makes it more accurate for how many calories you've burned and all that stuff. It's got dual band GPS where you might not have an iPhone that has dual band GPS. Uh, It just tracks from the phone. So the only way to be able to track from your watch is to is to download the run onto your watch and start the run (laughs) on your watch. And if you do that, that means that you have to connect your headphones to your watch, which is really annoying already. Then you have to go into Spotify or Apple Music on your watch, start playing music from Spotify or Apple Music with your headphones connected to your watch, and then start the Nike Run Club app on your watch. And if you do anything on your phone 
while you're on the run, while you're on the treadmill or whatever, your headphones will be like, I'm confused. Do you want to talk to the phone or do you want to talk to the watch? And then the Nike Run Club app, just like all of the voice commands just disappear completely and it just breaks. So it's bad for a lot of reasons and it's super, super buggy. But the number one thing that I think they need to change is if it recognizes that you are wearing a smartwatch that has the Nike Run Club app and is on connected it, to the phone and already, shows your metrics yeah. <laughs> already, it still it opens Nike Run Club automatically when you start the run on your phone. Yeah, it needs to track from your phone, even if the headphones this are connected to your watch, pretty, your your phone. Yeah, yes. pretty straightforward. That's so, that's complex, I, but com- it's like it's the the simplest. You just say, "Is there a watch on the person's wrist?" Yes. Okay. Cool. It's not that hard. Anyway. Yeah. That does sound <laughs> extremely annoying. It's Very so annoying. annoying. It's so annoying. So. I have way simpler ones on my list. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, my next one's pretty ranty. It's something that I realized I've been arguing with myself about for a long time. And when Adam mm-hmm. posted this, I was like, I can finally vent about this. <laughs> okay. So oh. this is an Ember oh. mug. A demo. Oh, God. They're so... <laughs> the Ember mug it's is so this great and terrible product <laughs> that is way too much money. Guess. Do you know how much this is? <sighs> No, this is like 200 bucks. It's $150 for yeah. the 12-ounce version. Can you hold it up to the camera? Sorry. This like, is a number bug. I have you, the copper version. That's $180, I believe. Thank you, Michael Fisher. <laughs> great <laughs> Christmas gift. They are great <laughs> gifts because they're way too expensive. But once you start using one, you cannot use a regular cup anymore. Mm. I'm con- like, I have one for work and at home at this so it's point. So eight sl- it's the eight sleep of beverages. Kind of, yeah. Hmm. Um, it is it is like, if you're not aware what it is, it's basically just a smart mug that will keep the temperature of your coffee at a specific temperature for like two hours or any or, hot drink or any or hot tea drink. drinker. Yeah. Um, and it's incredible. Cause I like drinking my coffee slow, microwaving your coffee sucks mm. and like keeping it warm for a long time. While I just do stuff is fantastic. So I can't live without it at this point. There's a bunch of issues that I have with it. One, the app is horrendous. Yeah, the it Bluetooth is like, connection is so bad. Dude, it's so bad. And you like every time I would walk past my kitchen, my phone would be like, oh, you want to connect to this Bluetooth? And it's like, <laughs> I've connected 800 times already. <laughs> so it's it's awful. So every time I've bought one of these or have bought one for someone else, I've connected it, set the temperature you want to, and just delete it from your phone. It's the <laughs> easiest way. It'll remember that temperature. Yeah, it's local memory. I'm pretty sure nobody who's ever bought one of these has like continued to use the app. They've yeah. probably set it and never looked at it again. Yeah. So I think they should make a cheaper version that has a physical dial or temperature sensor mm-hmm. on it or the charger. So you don't need an app. You Gosh. don't need a chip that connects. That's such a good If you could idea. get it at under $100 mm-hmm. and I just go setting this to 150 or whatever my ideal temperature is and then never touch it again. That's such a great point. It makes so much sense. This is a product that does not need to be connected to your phone. It, there's zero reason. You could just have a it. dial. Yeah. yeah. It, it would be so much easier. So that's my like mm. my idea for this being better and making it cheaper that might work. My other idea is a little bit of a pipe dream, but my other thing I hate about this is I love drinking out of a ceramic coffee mug. It's so much better. Don't they it's sell like a nostalgic. ceramic version? I don't believe so. Oh, really? They sell a metal version and this, I don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. They either need to make a ceramic version, which I'm sure they won't because then you're spending $150 on something that can break so much easier. Yeah. Or my ultimate pipe dream is if they can somehow create a universal adapter that I can put inside of a regular coffee ceramic oh. mug hmm. that I could con- could keep the temperature through some sort of food safe heating element and then I could use all the fun mugs that I buy on every vacation. I have like 20 mugs at home from different places I visited that I love. I don't use any of them Mm. because I only use this. That's funny. That would be so cool if somehow, because it's this element on the bottom that's heating it. If this could be something that I could put in the bottom of a coffee mug that I have already, I get to use different fun mugs and stuff like that, but keep my coffee warm for two hours, Yeah, that would be incredible. So also for context, it has inductive coils on the bottom and you set it on a charging mat that you have at your desk or whatever. And so as long as you're leaving it in that mat and you're picking it up, taking a sip, putting it back, your battery is great. Yeah. Uh, it has a built-in battery. It lasts about 45 minutes. Really? I've had longer than 45. I thought I I got close to like two hours really? with it. Yeah. Mine mine has been having it issues. It is a huge bummer when you don't see the light that it died and you're like, nice hot cuppy, cup of coffee, a cuppy of coffee. <laughs> and then you drink you've it and it's cold because already. you've been... You yeah, want a no, you're... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Ember mug, mm. 
Great, great gift. Terrible Bluetooth. Terrible Bluetooth. Yeah. Way too exp- It's so hard to tell someone to spend $150 on a coffee mug. That's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, they drink a lot of coffee. I could never or live tea. without it, though. Damn. Wow. All right. Amber nice. mug, but better. All right. Yeah. Marquez, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, All right. Got? Which one do you want? One, two, three, four, five, six, or oh, seven? Seven. You have oh seven? God. Yeah. Wow. Two through four. Two through four. All right. Okay. Two. Kia EV6 GT, but with good range. <laughs> Solid, okay. solid wish. Three, <laughs> three twenty, three fifty, two, two twenty. No, bad. Is that what it's 320. on? Three twenty. EV six GT is two hundred twenty miles of range. Good God. Of EPA. Oh. <laughs> Rated range. Oh. That's two. Okay. You want three? Yeah, give me three. Three. The Cybertruck, but with a screen instead of a rearview mirror. No, that makes oh. too much sense because the tonneau oh, cover yeah. covers the entire back window, so that you can't use it. If you drive with the tonneau cover open, you can see out the back, but a couple things about that. One, it's still kind of a slot because the back of the truck is so high and you don't really see much. And two, you lose like 25 miles of range per charge because of the aerodynamic mm. disadvantages of all of that turbulent air through the trunk. So people drive with it closed most of the time. Hmm. That should have been a screen, but and they the, know it. But there is... The screen on the screen. Wow, there is nice. the screen on the single screen yeah. that is down out of your normal field of view. And you can oh. train yourself to get used to that. But there is a mirror, a dinky, right. useless mirror right. there that should have been a screen. And everyone knows it should have been a screen. Why is it not a screen? It is also the smallest. You said dinky, but I cannot believe how small that yeah. mirror is compared to vouch. everything else in that truck. Yeah. So that's three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you wanted four? Yep. Do it. Galaxy S24, but small. <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay, oh. Sure. yeah. You just wanted. I, I thought you said Galaxy version? S24 Ultra, but small, and I was like, wait. That's I just also S24, thought that. But yeah, I, okay, feel I see like what you mean. That would have been cool so, too, but yeah. Since we go through those pretty quick, I feel like we could get one, two, and six and seven. You want one, or five, six, seven, five, six, and seven. Just finish the list. Yeah, just <laughs> send it. We'll, okay. we'll just all send our lists after okay. you. Yeah, yeah. One, AirPods Max, but light, and also USB C. Oh yeah, <laughs> and has yes. an off and has an off button. Oh, that was mine. <laughs> and I have, like, put a power button on the freaking okay. AirPods Max. AirPods Max, but power button and USB C USB-C yeah. and lighter. That's it. That's all you have to do. Apple. That's a lot for the of stuff. <laughs> That's a lot. That's of stuff. That's not that much. Those are stuff. reasonable uh, things, though. They are yeah, they heavy are metal headphones. Things. Apple. All you got to do is like heavy take metal. those metal cups and do something like magnesium or carbon fiber, and then just do the USB C port. Or we all know should be there. Well, titanium is kind of heavy too. Oh, you're right. But and then yeah, obviously a power. But button. it's lighter than stainless steel. But I think they're aluminum. Yeah, currently that's true. So aluminum anything lighter than light. aluminum mm. would be real nice. Mm. Helium. Uh, <laughs> helium. <laughs> David, no, you'd fly away. <laughs> <laughs> It'd lift you off the ground. Okay, I can keep ranting. Do it. Um, <laughs> MacBook Pro. Uh, d- <laughs> Marquez got this from me. But Face ID. <laughs> How do you have a notch this big? Yeah. That was With the just a selfie camera. When the first MacBook Pro M1 came out, uh, that was the number one complaint. I truly think that is the only thing that doesn't make sense about this laptop. I think this is the most well polished product to come out in the last like ten years. Considering that's my only thing Personally. I would change about it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm like, I spent four thousand dollars on my personal one and I don't I, I really don't have any complaints about it. And mine's like two, three years old, and I still yeah. only want one thing yeah. about it. Yeah. Definitely. Men only want one thing. And it's, <laughs> it's face ID. Face ID in their MacBook Pro. Yeah. So that's that's an easy one for me. Yeah, All right. that's a good one. Final Cut Pro on the with. iPad, but with but, plug-in support. But good. <laughs> and I know that there's not going to be a whole bunch of, like, I don't think it's going to replace Final Cut Pro on the Mac. And I think there's some intentional deficits uh, separating it from Final Cut Pro on the Mac. But plug-in support would really be great for me and also like better color controls but i don't know i'm probably asking for too much plugins what if you ask for adobe with faster exporting and not crashing (laughs) i would like to see that i would like to see that and to be fair i haven't used premiere in years so it could be way faster with apple silicon now yeah when m1 first came out i was still a premiere user and i edited my how the italian renaissance can save the smartphone camera video on it and every single time I would export it, it would take about two hours to export, and there would just be random green flashes in different That's, parts of the video. Yeah. To be fair, this was like the beta version of Premiere that just started supporting Apple Silicon, and it was in beta still. Mm-hmm. Probably a lot better. But I exported that like eight times, and it took like 16 hours. I didn't sleep for three days. And then the one thing that fixed it was just moving the project to Fisher's 
Intel MacBook Pro and exporting say, it on the Intel one. What machine were you on before that did the flashing? It was the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it was wow. right after so Premiere this. Beta had come out supporting Apple Silicon. So it was like super early. This is, yeah, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, so it'd probably be better now, um, but I also don't miss how much it crashed all the time. Yeah, and there's no autosave. Premiere, but autosave. Wait, <sighs> yeah. Premiere has autosave, doesn't it? It Premier has, has autosave auto every, not as uh, integer. every like okay. half an hour. Yeah. yeah. You can change that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm almost but then it shows like a loading icon on your screen every time it does it. Okay, I, that's better than losing half an hour's worth that's of work. True. That's totally true. <laughs> that's true. My last one that I've written down: Apple Watch, but with group fitness competitions. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how we didn't think of that. That's, I have, yeah. Okay, but I have a theory. Okay, I have theories. Do you want to hear the theories about why they don't do it? Yeah, I have you a said we had to wait. Yeah, till April. waiting for the. Video. Are we getting an exclusive right now? An exclusive. This is an David exclusive. Thought? If, okay, if only go. to bring more people to waveform. <laughs> This is an exclusive. Okay. okay. So I have this theory around uh, uh, the reason that Apple is intentionally kneecapping the fitness features on the Apple Watch. And it has to do with their relationship with N-I-K-E. Um, Just so the kids out there don't hmm. know what I'm talking about. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Nike. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sue me. Okay. So, so. Basically, Nike Run Club is a thing that, like I said, is like not pre-installed on the Apple Watch, but there's settings for it on the Apple Watch, and there's an install button in the settings of the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. So it's basically native. Uh, I have a theory that because Nike Run Club is inherently, like has social features built into it, where you can like run with your friends and have competitions and stuff, you can join like clubs and all this stuff, Nike and Apple have this agreement that Apple will not double up on certain features that Nike Run Club also has mm. so that when people want to do something with their Apple Watch, but they're like, why don't I have this? They can just move over to Nike to the Nike um, stuff. And it's not just like there's the Run Club, but there's also Nike, I think, is it called Fitness Club? There's another app that's not just running um, that is a bunch of Nike stuff. That was that was the one I needed for my watch face. I, I remember mm, wrong. Okay, so it it just seems insane to me that over the last couple of years, Apple has added like stride length, vertical height, automatic <laughs> automatic track detection, dual band GPS, so you can run in a city. Published a bunch of ads with ultra marathon runners, mm -hmm. and they don't have things like they don't have um, any half marathon training programs. They don't have any full marathon training programs. The most they have is a 10K training program, but it's not even a training program. It's just a bunch of random Apple Fitness Plus videos that are not even linear. It's like season four, episode two of Run With Me, season nine, episode seven of Run With Me, and it's just eight random episodes. So my theory is that like Nike is is basically telling Apple like don't do too much of what people come to Nike Run Club for mm -hmm. so that you can funnel people into Nike Run Club and I think that's why they don't have group competitions. That checks out and to mm. which I would say Apple just ignore that one feature <laughs> and build it anyway. Yeah. That's my suggestion. Yeah. Please. So, please. Nice. Yeah. David, do you have any more? Um, well, I did, and then more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say the face ID thing too, but um, gosh, I mean, everything's perfect. Life is beautiful, you know. Beautiful. I don't know what what is bad. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot that's bad, but you should be more specific. Do you? Do any of you have another one while I can think? I have one more small one. Do it. Okay. Sure. The Dyson stick vacuum, I think, is the most accurately hyped product ever. I thought it was way too overhyped. I bought one. I'm obsessed with it. Which one did you buy? I th whatever one was at Costco. Because I almost there's a bunch. Of I Costco. almost randomly yeah. splurged on the V15 to detect. I don't even know 15? what. Yeah, oh, sh I got they're that. all the same thing in my eyes. <laughs> I'm sure there's a little bit difference. bigger and more powerful. It's like a and thousand. I think some of them are what attachments it comes with. Like I think mine like was specifically had the like pet hair attachment at yeah. Costco. Mm. It's too short. I wanted to. I, there needs to be a tall version or a like longer pole that I can get for it. I'm sure. If you're over six foot, when you're reaching out, you find yourself like your hand is under your hip at that point when you're pushing it. Mm, yeah, and it's not wrist enough. Fatigue, there's, yeah, yeah it's, that's uh, funny. I'm getting older. We're past 30 now. Back starting to hurt. Mm. I need a longer version. They are from the UK, and UK does have a uh, shorter average height than the US. That's really funny. I think, I think, you know, obviously, 
Dyson are the suction experts. But there's another form factor of stick vacuum where the compressor and the cha- the like collection chamber mm-hmm. are down at the bottom next to the head. And that enables you to put elbow bends in the stock to get under the couch mm-hmm. easier. Which- no, Dyson has that. <laughs> I, no, I have one. No. I have it at I home. Have it too at I home. Have- <laughs> Do you have the same one? No, I have the V8. I have one that I can attach to the top. I can do between the chamber and the pole, and then it has a joint so that I can go a perfect 90 degrees and then push it under my... The problem is, is just using that as a taller adapter and locking it. It just feels a little weaker when I'm pushing full strength from the top with something that's supposed to be bent. Yeah, I do not... Mine does not have that. I don't use it. Do you want mine? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What do you mean you don't use it? How do you vacuum it under your couch? I like... 30 sometimes. Facts. I respect. don't want that in the episode. <laughs> not respect. We're leaving it in. Keeping it. We're going to bleep it. This is <laughs> way worse than what you actually said. Okay. The okay. vacuum Which is one? the one. Which one do I buy? Any of them. The yeah. V8 is uh. like. The V8 is like 350 bucks, which really? I know sounds I a lot. I just started scrolling through this. But dude, so many, dude. There's can, so many. There's, there's so, so many. many. It's just like I vacuum more because I'm more okay with like just vacuuming a single room at a time rather than like plugging the vacuum in and I would just do the whole house. I can bring it into my car and vacuum my car out all the time. It's just so nice. I've not I vacuumed know it's my expensive. apartment in two and a half years. And I, you might need something here. a little more heavy I duty then. Like <laughs> I would like. Have you heard of a power washer? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, nice. all right. So I got two little ones. Okay. So thanks. Susan. A collar that's not long. A collar that doesn't do that. <laughs> Um, Okay, so as we mentioned, I switched to Samsung. I'm now a Samsung boy. So I can only see the world in terms of Samsung products now. So (laughs) what I want is the next fold. Small speaker on my desk. (laughs) I want the next fold to be not a candy bar shape. Yes. I want it to be more like one plus fold or like a pixel fold, something along those lines. Passport. I want it to also have the pen. In inside, yes. yeah, inside yeah, yeah. the freaking That's got to be coming. Oh. That's crazy That's that you have to buy it separately with a case. I don't, I don't understand. Well, and it's bigger, right? And it's, yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah. The other thing is, if they want to ignore that completely, because they probably will, I want <laughs> Google to. And we saw rumors of this already happening, where if you plug in a Pixel into a display, it'll give you like a Dex like mm-hmm. experience, right. Display yeah. port out. I want that, but to be just Chrome OS. Just give me Chrome OS. Dude. You can already run Linux that's, on Android That was phones. the dream of Fuchsia, and Fuchsia yeah. just kind of died. Well, I don't know if it technically, did they end it? Um, it's still somewhere in Google, I'm sure. I think but, it might There's a lot. What is it? Yeah, yeah. That's a, so those are, floating around. those are my two. I just want, just, I'm a simple lad. Just give me Samsung, but Google things, and Google, but Samsung things. Mm. Yeah, I like those. David, oh, we've been waiting. I have an, oh, I have one. All right. I want them to completely axe the Apple Watch charger and just switch it to MagSafe. Wait, and I know the I know the circle's too big. The right? circle puck, because yeah, because so currently, currently, you can charge the AirPods with wireless charging with MagSafe or with the Apple Watch charger, which is really dope. You can, yeah. What? Yeah. Right? No. Are you sure? Pretty I think sure. you can. The Apple I Watch no charger idea. is is the only non Qi charger. But I think you can charge the AirPods. Isn't Pro it that the Apple Watch charger like them. is Qi, but it's like I I would like to try it, but I don't I proprietary Qi. I think you can. You can also charge your MagSafe charging case with an Air Apple Watch. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Which huh. is which is cool. Which is cool. So, but right now, hmm. the the thing that charges the most things is the regular MagSafe charger because it charges your phone and it charges your AirPods. Everything that's not the watch. Yeah, but the yeah. watch you have to bring a specific charger for. But if you just bring the watch charger, it can charge that and your AirPods, but not your phone. Mm-hmm. So there's this awkward thing where it's like you, you have always to have to bring two. <laughs> yeah. And so if they could just unify, and MagSafe seems to be the thing they're unifying around. Obviously, the watch probably isn't really big enough to fit on the MagSafe thing, but it also seems like it, it, it. even if it didn't magnetize, it should be able to do charging. Here's why I think that might not work. 
The weird thing about charging watches on not those specific pucks is because of the way, can you like, take your watch off for a second? Not the coning, but the way the watch strap comes oh. down generally doesn't let something, sorry, you have a normal I watch. A can I see, can watch. you turn your, for those so, listening, this is a Casio A12. So see how like, <laughs> see how, the because the strap is facing down <laughs> when you put it on a table, it's not totally it usually cool. is like floating above a little bit so yeah. depending this, this is a little more flexible but some yeah. other ones like this it would weird. possibly be sitting because the puck is bigger it would be sitting above the puck which is why if they added magnets it pulled it um, down very slightly it would almost be cool if they made an adapter that could fit on top of the puck yeah and then just go like that yeah. and hold it it's just that's my guess that, on why that's hard yeah i'm sure apple could figure it out but. it's just mm. awkward that if you want the holy trinity of apple devices what's that the magsafe <laughs> duo yeah, I have one. When you, when God, you said the ugliest product it's awkward I've to bring this seen. around, I thought you were talking about the MagSafe no, Duo. Adam, <laughs> Adam has a way better MagSafe Duo product that is not the MagSafe Duo, but it's oh, cooler and I think better. It's, the tw it's called the Butterfly from 12 South. And yeah. It's freaking awesome. It's really awesome, but it's it. so expensive. Did it's it, like $130. Did Anchor just make insane. a little... Yeah, but it's not pretty. Is it, the, is it the is it the square the brick? There's the brick that folds into three. That's yeah. your phone, your AirPods, and your yeah. watch. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, MagSafe Duo but USB C? Is it lightning? It's lightning. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Well, they don't sell it anymore, right? The MagSafe Duo. I think they it's on I Amazon. After... Maybe not. it's twenty-seven percent off on Amazon, so <laughs> only ninety-four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ninety-four. Yeah, that's one of the don't. <laughs> Yikes! It's also ugly. It's the dumb. It's one of the dumber it's things. It's made. the thing I hate the most in my backpack. Yeah. So yeah, I would. I just. I. I just want a unified charging system. That's a good one. Also, my, one more for me. <laughs> any phone with Qi two. <laughs> agree. Oh, yes. Hard agree. Hard hard That's agree. A good place to end it. I like <laughs> yeah. that a lot. Every phone, listen up. <laughs> Figure it out. Somebody, please. Please do it. Please do it. Okay, we've been going long enough. We should <laughs> yeah. probably get those trivia answers, so let's do it. Trivia. Also, pass me an eraser. Any of them. All right, so quick update on the score. I guess I'll take one, too. Marquez in the lead with cuatro. Four. Correct. For those who don't speak Spanish. Unlike, Andrew. Unlike me. In second place in the with second lead. three. In the second <laughs> lead. Tres. David coming in third out of three. Uno. With one. <laughs> Thanks. First question. Howdy. So, Bose, not owned by Samsung, but they are owned by a world-famous scientific institute. What is it? This is at the point where I just have to hope I know I'm wrong. I just have to name something that actually is a scientific institute so I don't also look like an idiot when I'm wrong. We're both gonna look like idiots. <laughs> Flip him and read. All right, who wants to go first? I almost did put that. Damn, yours are both way better than mine. <laughs> Marquez, why don't you go first? Okay, cool, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put uh, New Zealand Scientific Institute. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? That is not correct. I, I feel like it was some might argue one. worldwide is not based on a specific country. Although, I'm never mind. I'm also an idiot. I feel like I put NASA. <laughs> <laughs> if NASA were Bose, I'd be so happy. Damn. DARPA. <laughs> uh, no, I put MIT, which stands for. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Which is correct. Which is when I realized I was so wrong by the worldwide thing when I looked and he had a state. MIT. What's below MIT? I wrote Romney underneath. <laughs> David. Sorry. What does that mean? Mitt like Romney. Mitt Romney. <laughs> Like the Why? former governor of Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know. Could, do we have to redo that? Because Mitt is not a common no, which is funny. Leave it. All right. Uh, Clean cut. Let's just not in get case. political. Yeah. <laughs> Clean cut, just in case. Second question. Safari, the browser engine, <laughs> is WebKit. Chrome and all Chromium-based browsers, what is the engine called? Uh, Fun fact. This engine is actually a fork of WebKit. So everything is WebKit. <laughs> Which WebKit is also a fork of something if else. If I put WebKit, will that be right? No. <laughs> I put Steam Engine, is that right? Bet. <laughs> Bet. I was thinking of putting Steam. I don't... Steam. 
<laughs> what a Steam run on. What a Steam OS run on Linux. I'm not even. All right, flip them and read. What I do we got? Nothing. I'm, st <laughs> I'm sticking with it. I'm pretty sure it's Chromium. God damn. Wrong. I have nothing. Nothing? <laughs> okay. I put OpenCL. Nope. Oh. It's Blink. Blink? <laughs> Blink. How, how have we not heard of this? I was wondering the same thing. That's why I made it a trivia question. How have I never known that? I would love uh, for someone I thought it was all to like find a reason why this is still correct. Because <laughs> I feel like it is. Well, I was going to. Well, Probably in some weird way. So Chromium is the engine. Yeah. I could, I don't and know. what was the question again? So what was the, the browsers. Engine? There's Chromium-based oh. browsers. Yeah. So what is Chromium? Then? Based. No, it's a code base. It's a library? Bam. It's a chemical element. Too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> chemical element. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. When you Google what is Chromium, you just, you just don't get, get the engine stuff at all. You just Free open source web browser project. Uh, None of this base, is the engine. basis of Google Chrome and provides the majority of the code for other browsers. Maybe just an open sourced Which, browser. Which, as Alice said, it was a fork of WebKit from like 2013. I, I guess it's just an open source browser. It's a I code don't... base. Boom. Boom. Wow. That's crazy. Blink? You know what else is crazy? The Waveform Podcast is produced by Adam Alina and Ellis Rovin. And our intro outro music is by Vane Sill, and we are part of the Vox Media Podcast Network. And that was out of order. Transition that's, God. That's okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, though. Nice. Have a good day. Peace. Bye. Hi. Later. Bye. See ya. Do you know yeah. what Lady Gaga's name is? Um, Lady. <laughs>